All right, so quick update on the, um, the data sets for Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Before we actually dive into what's new with regards to the data set, I just want to do a quick overview of the different components of what makes the Microsoft Graph ecosystem. All right, the first component is something that I think we're all used to, which is the REST APIs. They've been around for many years. Those allow for CRUD type scenarios, right? Transactional scenarios where you can go and create, read, update, delete data inside of Microsoft 365. They are, however, throttled, which means they're not built for large um, data exports, if you want, right? Because you only have a certain limitation of how much data you can get in a, uh, in a certain time frame. The second component is the connectors. So connectors are built to ingest data inside of Microsoft Graph, to bring your on-premises data inside of the Microsoft Graph, to allow you to build search-related scenarios, to just improve the experience, the overall experience, let's say on the office, portal, the office.com, and so on. And then the third piece, which is really the focus of this session here, is Microsoft Graph Data Connect, which is really built to allow bulk data access to generate your own insights and analytics over a period of time. Right, so when you're using Microsoft Graph Data Connect, there is an Azure play, which means that the data that you're exporting will be exported into Azure using either Azure Data Factory or Azure Synapse. And this is something I want to touch on. I know the focus is really more on what's new with data sets, but I want to leave time at the end to just introduce the new support we have for Azure Synapse. And, and the advantage of using Microsoft Graph Data Connect, well, the first one is you're not going to be subject to throttling. So it can extract a large amount of data without uh, hitting any throttling limits, right? So you can extract millions and millions of emails, for example, or calendar invites, if you want to be able to generate your own insights. The other advantage is you can scope it down to an audience. You can say, I only want to get the information for people that are part of the legal and HR team, for example. And the third thing is you can actually scope it down at the field level. So for example, if you want to go and generate insights to understand how people are collaborating via email inside of your organization, you don't want to extract the body of the email. You don't want to go and extract the attachments, right? You don't care about that. The only thing you want to know is who are the actors. So you can go in and essentially come up with what I call a data contract and say, all right, I want to extract the emails from the legal team for the past three months, and I only only want to get the two, the carbon copy and the BCC field. That's all I care about. And that will honor the data contract and extract the data inside of an Azure storage account that only contains the selected fields. Okay, very important. And the data will be stored as JSON. So you can go in and load it directly within Power BI, or you can just use something like Azure Synapse to build your extract, transform, load pipelines. Quick update on the data sets. Now I need to talk about the legend here. <laughs> so items that are in black in the currently available um, column, these are items that have been available for, for months, right? These are items that we've had since almost the beginning of Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Items that are in green are items we've recently re released, uh, meaning that um, in the past two to three months, these are new data sets that we made available. The ones that have an asterisk beside, they're currently available in private preview, but are going to be released within the next few weeks uh, for general availability. So let's quickly uh, glance through the new items in here, right? One of the things we are working on is to bring group conversations to the forefront, being able to extract information about groups conversation that you have uh, in Outlook. The second one that we released about, I want to say two months ago, is the inbox data set. Now, you might have question around, all right, so looks like we have the messages, which is the email, we have the sent items, and now we have inbox. What's the difference between them all? Well, it, it depends on your scenario. So what we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible for you to reduce the overall number of items that you're extracting, right? To make it easier to, to build your insights based on your own scenario. So the messages data set includes everything. Emails that have been sent, emails you've received, and doesn't really matter in what folder you've actually stored your, your messages. It's all the emails. The sent item, well, that one's fairly easy. It's the e emails you've been sending, right? So that will normally help you remove duplicates. So for example, if I'm sending an email right now to five of my colleagues, that will actually count as six emails, right? One for each recipient plus one for me. But if I'm only interested in knowing how people are using emails internally, then sent item will help reduce that overall data set that you're going to be extracting. 
inbox on the other end is really just the emails that you have in your root inbox folder. Very important. Now let's talk about the, the new groups data set that we've released. So we released three new groups data set, the group details, which contains information about like, is this a public or a private group? Is this a mail enabled, right? So it's really more around the configuration of the groups, the group members and the group owners. One thing that's really important to note is with Microsoft Graph Data Connect, the data sets are normally metered, meaning that you're gonna be charged per thousand items that you extract. Everything that is beside Azure AD in here, those are all free data sets, as well as the data sets while they're in preview. Okay? So the group details, group member, group owners, those are really more what I, I would consider supporting data sets. So those are completely free to use. So if you wanna just like get started with Microsoft Graph Data Connect, that would probably be a great one to get started with. Now let's move on to Teams, right? So we are, we just released last week, the pre private preview for call records. Call records contain information about who's been joining the meeting, for how long was the meeting, uh, and then how, well, pretty much information about when was the meeting started, when was it ended. We have information about channel details, right? That is also in preview. It's actually information about, all right, so this channel is a private channel. Uh, we have Giphy's enabled. We have, right, so all the settings for the different channels. Chats, we've had that for a long time now. Those are private chats, so one-on-one -on -one and group chats. And we've also released a private preview for the standard channel conversation, right? What we mean by standard here is that we still don't support private channels. Those are just standard channels. All the messages that have been, all the, the, the message thread that happen in the, the standards channels. On the SharePoint front, we have a document sharing information data set, which contains information about all the sites, all the lists, and all the items in your SharePoint online environment, along with information about the users, it's the, the, the document or the item is shared with, right? So it'll tell you, for example, all right, so this file here is shared with 20 people uh, and five of them are external users, for example. So you can actually build dashboards around this. And this is one I want to bring up here, right? just to do some quick ideation, but essentially one of the demos we built, right? It was just to quickly understand, all right, so how are documents being shared externally, right? So for example, here, these are all documents that have been shared with external users on my HR site. So I can go in and have a look here and say, yeah, all right, so there's this document called staff rationalization, or there's this document here called secret recipe that has been shared with uh, John outside of the enterprise, right? So trying to understand how our documents, um, well, I mean, information leakage is a big problem, right? But also understanding how people are collaborating with users outside of the organization. Another type of visualization we could create is try to understand, all right, what are the top externally shared files, right? So for example, here, this, this PDF document is shared with 19 external users, right? Like what's in there? Why is it like so popular? And why is it shared that often with external users? Same goes for the overshared sites, right? Like what share, what sites are being overshared? So there's this site here, right? CEO connection shared with 63 users, right? Maybe this is something we actually wanna flag and investigate. Like why is this site here that should be limited to the CEO's organization shared with so many users? Try to understand as well how people are using sharing links inside of the organization, right? So right now I can see that there were 210 uh, links generated that could be shared with anyone inside of my organization, whereas I only have about 23% that were shared with specific people. Maybe there's some training that I need to do um, with regards to this. Yeah. Uh, Ralph, I just saw your question. So if you go to um, the Azure um, page search for Microsoft Graph Data Connect, all the information around the pricing is, is listed there as well. Um, groups, right, real quick, right, try to understand, all right, so how are we creating groups based on the visibility, right? 57% of all our groups are created as private, right? Uh, what groups are mail enabled overall? I mean, these are just really, really basic insights that you could create, right? Understand how people are actually creating groups over time and then drill down into the actual days during the month. Team call records, try to understand like, all right, here are all the meetings over time. And of course, this is a uh, tenant, the tenant I use have very limited data, but try to understand like, how are people make, having meetings during the day, right? Are these ad hoc meetings, meaning that somebody actually just ping you on IM and called you directly, are those scheduled meetings, 
very important. You can see that in my environment here, even though I have very um, a limited set of meetings, 60, almost 67% of them were ad hoc meetings, right? That in some organization can be a productivity killer. So try to understand this. Average time spent per users in meetings, right? You can see that I'm spending about 150 minutes on a weekly basis in meetings. The average length of meetings in my organization, right? So those are just some insights you can actually generate using the uh, the various data sets that, that we offer. Now, as far as um, data sets that are soon to be released, meeting transcripts is one of the big ones, right? So just as an ideation, imagine being able to just do some cognitive services against the meeting transcript to highlight some of the action items that were discussed. Right? That is one thing. That will also include information around when people join, when, what reaction people had, right? Like, did we have thumbs up when we mentioned a specific topic? When we mentioned Microsoft Graph Data Connect dataset updates, how many thumbs up did we get? Right? Being able to do that analysis as well. Usage around SharePoint, understanding how people are using files when they're creating files, deleting files, moving files. And then on the backlog, we have plans to bring uh, into Microsoft Graph Data Connect information around things like call quality data, right? Private and shared channels, of course. This is one that we need to bring since we have standard channel. Information around files and list items in SharePoint. So the metadata around those files. We're looking at opportunities to bring in some of the Yammer information as well, right? Community details, uh, conversations, so on. Outlook tasks. And then anything that is exposed to a, a get in Microsoft Graph is a potential candidate to be brought over to Microsoft Graph Data Camp. Real quick, I want to talk about Azure Synapse integration. Right? So as I mentioned, we uh, recently introduced support for Azure Synapse Analytics, which means directly within the Synapse, you can go in and create pipelines that will allow you to extract your Microsoft 365 data using Microsoft Graph Data Connect. And then from there, you can like do all transformation you want. You can use a no-code approach using like data flows. You can use your your Spike, uh, your Spark runbooks if you want to do a bit more coding. So really, everything is baked in the Synapse workspace. And just as uh, a and one thing we've heard is that it is uh, challenging for some people, uh, some people that never played with Synapse or Azure Data Factory to get started. So one thing that we uh, have been working on and we're working on improving is this new Copy Data Wizard which allows you with a single click to just go and automatically build a, uh, a pipeline to extract your data. So I can go in and say, I want to run it once. I want to run it on a daily basis, on a monthly basis. Click next on this. I'll just select my Office 365 connection. And then it'll list all the data sets that I have available. One thing we are working on is improving directly the inline documentation around, all right, so that's good. You have the contact data set, but what does it contain, right? So we are working on this right now, but one thing I can do is, all right, I want to get my inbox and my um, team's uh, call records. Click next on this. Directly from here, I can go in and say, all right, so for my inbox, I want to go in and bring the data for my legal team, right? So really, uh, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get kind of approach, right? Everything is very visual instead of you having to create your pipeline from scratch. I want to get all the emails from the past month, right? I could do the same thing, select, all right, so for team's call record, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go in and this time I'm going to select, let's say, the, the finance team, right? So really, sky's the limit here. You can go click next on this. Uh, well, yes, I need to specify a filter in here. Apologies for this. And then what will happen? Give me a second is, warning, Nick, as we'll get to our next presenter. All good. I'm done. So essentially, then what will happen is it'll ask you, where do you want to go and store it? Click next. It'll create the pipeline, and it'll automatically trigger it for you and start the, the export process. So what I'll do is uh, I saw a couple of questions in the chat. I'll answer them in the chat. But I appreciate you folks uh, having me. And uh, we're moving on to the next speaker. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much, Nick. Great to see all the new data sets. We did see a lot of questions in there. Please do uh, follow up with those in the chat. Um, but it looks like some good excitement and some other feedback for folks uh, on what would uh, be some future things that we're looking for.